Hey guys, how are you doing? That was bad. Getting right into it today, guys. Um, on the wrong page. So good start. Chapter. Whoa. That shakes a good amount. Okay. Chapter nine: Nutrition. Registered and licensed dietitians and nutritionists are authorized to provide nutrition counseling and medical nutrition therapy and meal plans. Fitness professionals who are not also registered or licensed as dietitians or nutritionists can provide general nutrition guidelines, direct clients to credible nutrition resources, refer clients to dietitians and nutritionists, and provide accountability and support with dietary changes. So this point is a very good point. I very much like that NASM is you know, somewhat admitting that as a personal trainer, um, especially if a client wants to lose weight, you need to give them some amount of dietary recommendations. It's impossible to lose a solid amount of body fat on exercise alone. If you're a personal trainer and you're not giving general calorie intake advice. It cut out there, but what I was going to say is I think as a personal trainer, to say that you're going to help a client lose or gain weight, it would be really irresponsible to tell a client that you could help them with that without giving them any nutritional advice or plans. Uh, credible and reliable nutrition information includes peer-reviewed research and scholarly sources. Protein is comprised of 20 amino acids. Nine are essential and most can, must be attained via the diet. The role of protein is, is a synthesis of tissue, organs, hormones, enzymes, and peptides. Dietary sources of complete proteins include soy, animal foods, such as meats, poultry, seafood, and dairy. Plant-based incomplete protein the uh, protein foods include legumes, grains, and vegetables. Protein, oh, here's a key point, guys. This is a very important point to memorize, and not just for the NASM exam, but just as I always say, general fitness guide. Um, just a good thing to know, and uh, helps with the understanding of why uh, fats aren't very filling. Um, so this is the point. I haven't said it yet. Uh, protein contains four calories per gram, which makes it more filling. So that's a kind of cool tidbit about uh, protein. Again, a very basic point, but a lot of people don't have it memorized in their head, including myself, unfortunately. Actually, with how many times I've filled this part, filmed this part, I probably have it memorized by now. It's four. I didn't even look at the screen. It's four. Uh, the RDA up for protein is 0.8 grams, kilogram body weight. So I, I believe they are uh, saying uh, the RDA, the recommended daily, I don't know, they don't say what the acronym says, R. Um, the rec uh, whatever, they recommend that you have 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. I'm assuming that's what they're saying. I know that a uh, 0.8 figure is a, a decent figure. Um, I would hover if I was training client and giving my general fitness guidance, guide, guidelines, I would uh, recommend closer to one to 1.2, unless they have a very small appetite where that 0.8 is just enough for them to not get too full off protein. Anyway, the AMDR protein is 10% to 35% of total calories. Another really important point, guys. In my opinion, 10% too low, but uh, you know, that 35 sounds pretty good. Carbohydrates include simple sugars, complex carbohydrates, glycogen, and fiber. Carbohydrates are an important energy source of, ex uh, of exercising individuals and athletes. Dietary sources of carbohydrates include plant, uh, plant foods and dairy, including grains, vegetables, legumes, fruit, milk, and yogurt. Simple sugars include the monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, galactose, and disaccharides, lactose, sucrose, uh, and maltose. Complex carbohydrates are long chains of glucose units called polysaccharides, which are slower to digest and raise blood sugar glucose levels slowly. Again, a bunch of chemistry, I believe, uh, terms that I never really thought I'd hear again, but uh, here we go with the saccharides. Um, sources of complex carbohydrates include starches, legumes, and vegetables. The glycemic, in, 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 the glycemic index of the effect of carbohydrates on blood sugar levels low GI foods cause smaller rises in blood glucose compared to high GI foods. Glycemic load is a, little, a better indicator of carbohydrates effect on blood sugar levels because it accounts for glycemic index and the quantity of carb, no sorry, yeah quantity of carbohydrates consumed. Carbohydrates contain four calories per gram, and that is the same as proteins. Glycogen is the storage form of carbohydrates in animals and humans. Glycogen is stored in the liver and skeletal muscles. Fiber is indigestible carbohydrate associated with various health benefits that include both soluble and insoluble fiber. 
the AMDR for carbohydrates is 45 to 65% of your daily calories. Fiber recommendations, 25 to 28 grams of fiber a day for a woman aged 19 to 50 years old, and 30 to 34 grams um, a day for a man aged 19 to 50 years old. The 45 to 65% of your calories should be carbs, Nazim likes carbs, go carbs, go carbs. Lipids are commonly referred to as fats and include triglycerides, phospholipids, and sterols. Saturated fat sources, uh, saturated fat sources include animal fats, full fat dairy, coconut, and palm oil. Polyunsaturated fat sources include omega-6, nuts, seeds, oil, omega-3, omega-3, fatty fish, fatty fish, flaxseed, walnut, chia seeds, fortified milk, eggs, dairy from grass-fed cows, and green vegetables. Uh, monosaturated fat include olives, olive oil, avocado, peanuts, and canola. Phospholipids sources include meats, egg yolk, seafood, poultry, soybeans, and grains. Sterile sources include cholesterol from animal foods, egg yolk, and plant sterols. Uh, lipids contain nine calories per gram, and that is why it's hard to um, be on a weight loss diet while you're eating a lot of fatty foods, not because fat's bad for you um, at all. It actually, a lot of the food that they listed there, um, I just lost uh, 30 pounds uh, eating a lot of that uh, because it made the food so much more enjoyable. They are going to be less filling since they are up to nine calories per gram. The AMDR for lipids is 20 to 35% of total calories. Vitamins and minerals are inorganic compounds essential to regulating metabolic processes such as energy metabolism deficiencies and sufficiencies can contribute oh wow i didn't read that period vitamins and minerals are inorganic compounds essential to regulating metabolic processes such as energy metabolism deficiencies and insufficiencies can contribute to health issues vitamins include two groups of fat soluble uh, two groups fat soluble and water soluble vitamins a d e a and K are fat soluble. Water soluble vitamins include vitamin C and B vitamin, thymine, riboflavin, nicine, folate, B12, pant, pantothenic, pantoth uh, go. Siri. pantothenic, pantothenic acid and biotin. Oh, I'll f see if I'm right on that. Biotin. 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 Not right. A balanced diet with a wide variety of Minimally processed foods will likely supply adequate vitamins. Minerals include major mineral, major minerals and trace minerals. Fluid recommendations, general population, approximately 11.5 cups. 11.5, that sounds weird. 11 and a half cups a day, 2.7 liters of fluid for women, approximately 15.5 cups, 3.7 liters for men. So, um, I'm confused. 11 and a half cups for women and then 15 and a half cups for men. That was more confusing than I wanted it to be. Hydration guidelines for athletes include 12 to 16 ounces of fluid every 10 to 15 minutes for activities longer than 60 minutes. Athletes should replace fluids at one and a quarter times the amount of body weight lost during an event. Sports, sports drinks may be hypotonic lower concentration than body fluids, isotonic similar concentrations, body fluids, or hypertonic higher concentration than flu body fluids. Sports drinks are likely unnecessary for short duration exercises lasting uh, less than 60 minutes, unless in hot or humid temperatures. The strategy combination are used to help clients achieve their weight goals, primarily including modifications of energy intake and physical activity. The first law of thermodynamics states that the energy cannot be, that energy cannot be created nor destroyed but only converted from one form to another. Weight gain is the result of energy intake exceeding energy output, whereas weight loss is the result of output exceeding energy intake. Other factors that influence weight include sleep, medication, and endocrine disorders. Food labels convey information on nutritional value and content of products via the nutrition facts panel and the ingredients list. Food labels can help clients make informed uh, informed decisions about how a food item contributes to their nutrition and fitness goals. Fat loss requires a net calorie deficit, but with the goal of minimizing loss of lean mass and any reduction of TDEE due to ad adaptive thermogenesis. Adequate calorie intake, especially adequate protein intake combined with resi resistance training, remains an essential element for increasing muscle mass. 
So uh, that point before is what I was referring to. Um, where to go? For fat loss, a net calorie deficit, but with the goal of minimizing. Okay, so essentially what I'm saying is you need the, the calorie deficit uh, to be able to lose weight, and the inverse is true. To gain weight, you need to be at a calorie surplus. So I think it's kind of odd that NASM or in general personal trainers aren't expected to give nutritional advice when most of clients' goals cannot be achieved through exercise alone. Makes sense though, I I guess um, it's a liability risk, but um, just a weird thing I didn't think about when I was a kid dreaming of personal training. And that is it, we're done. No, we're not. Fat loss, oh yeah. Uh, nutrition strategies for improved sport performance are numerous and include ensuring adequate energy, calories, and macronutrient intake, meal timing, and hydration are also important to maximize sport performance. And that is chapter nine, nutrition. And next one is chapter 10, supplementation. You know, there, this uh, this chapter's got some good stuff. Um, can't lie. Key takeaways from this chapter, in my opinion, or from what I've heard about, um, from or from what I've heard from other people, the water intake, 11 and a half cups a day for a woman, which is equivalent to 2.7 liters. And then for men, it's recommended that they have 15 and a half cups, which, re which is equivalent to 3.7 liters. Men are uh, should have more water, um, essentially, is what that's saying. But those, those figures, I heard you actually should memorize. The uh, number of calories per gram for each macronutrient, which is fat, protein, and carbohydrates, um, it's 449. Guess which one's nine? Um, th that's the, yeah, you got it. And then the carbo, um, yeah, and then what percentage of calories should be each macronutrient should be your total caloric intake for the day? I think I said that right. Whoa, this is 20 minutes. Wow, I'm gonna have to edit this. That's it for the video. I'm at 20 minutes. It's too long. Um, and uh, here's my regular disclaimer. Um, um, this is a NASM study guide. Um, I'm not quite sure where I got it. I know it was free. I think one time I got it on the website. Uh, I think another time I got it from, I don't know, but, um, I'm not trying to uh, mess with NASM's paywall at all. I just think this is outdated or sorry, not their most up-to-date, um, content that they, they would sell anymore. So it's uh, free on the internet. So I decided to, you know, um, help anybody kind of nail down these concepts. Um, if they're trying to either study for NASM or just kind of learn about exercise science in general, get they're really... You know, exercise science 101, drilled in their head, and uh, be brainwashed with uh, NASM's OPT model in the process. Um, but that is it for today. Thank you for watching. It is Rat Dad signing out. Bye.